Today, we are confronted with a deeply sad reality. The heavy rains in Brazil are causing widespread devastation and tragedy. However, do you know that the Bible has something to say about this? Right, for thousands of years the scriptures have served as a source of comfort, wisdom and guidance, providing answers to our questions during difficult times. Its message is particularly relevant and impactful now. Are you prepared to discover how the Bible addresses topics like nature and finding hope amidst turmoil? This analysis will be profound, insightful, and will provide you with a fresh perspective. Before we delve into this subject, I kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel, ensuring that you never miss any of our daily uploads. Join me on this captivating journey as we explore these fascinating topics together. Let's get started. The current situation in southern Brazil is truly heartbreaking and deeply concerning. The news pouring in is overwhelming, with entire families losing everything and many living in terror. It is incredibly sad and unfortunate to witness what they are going through. On behalf of our channel, we want to express our heartfelt solidarity with all those affected by this situation. According to reports, the extent of the devastation is immense. It is estimated that there have been dozens of fatalities, with 128 people reported missing and 372 injured in Rio Grande do Sul alone. Approximately 80% of the municipalities in the region are either partially or completely flooded, forcing around 20 3500 people to evacuate their homes. The magnitude of this tragedy is truly shocking and demands an urgent and supportive response. In the face of such a heartbreaking situation, we find ourselves wondering what the Bible teaches us about moments of crisis. As Christians, we are sometimes misunderstood or accused of being alarmists or speculators. However, we have a responsibility to share what the Bible teaches us. Our intention is not to spread fear, but to provide guidance on what is to come and how to find salvation in Jesus. It is important to consider a few factors. First and foremost, nature is far beyond human control, which is an undeniable truth. When natural disasters occur, there is little that humans can do to control or prevent them. Neither science nor any other entity has ultimate control over nature. This reality highlights the fact that the one who created nature holds true authority over it. While arguments may arise regarding why such disasters occur, it is clear that nature surpasses human control. In times of catastrophes of this magnitude, all we can do is wait and see what happens. It is a humbling reminder of our limited power in the face of nature's forces. Let's take a look at Psalm 135 verses 6 to 7. It says that whatever the Lord wills, he does in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and in all the deeps. He makes the clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for rain. It draws the winds from its deposits. These verses emphasize that God holds universal sovereignty. He does as he pleases in every place within his domain. As Arthur Pink noted, divine sovereignty means that God is truly God. He not only bears the name, but he also reigns over the entire universe, orchestrating all things and working according to his divine will. As we witness these events unfolding, it becomes clear that God has the power to intervene and control nature. Secondly, we find that God has the solution. Let's take a look at the Gospel of Matthew 8 verses 25 to 27, stated, The disciples of Jesus came and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. Jesus responded to them, saying, Why are you fear, you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and he became great prosperous. The men were amazed and wondered, Who is this man that even the winds and the sea obey him? During this incident, Jesus was crossing from one shore to another when a storm arose while he rested in the boat. The terrified disciples turned to him in their distress, recognizing that he was the right person to seek help from. After admonishing them for their lack of faith, Jesus rebuked the winds and the sea. Suddenly, a great calm prevailed, leaving the disciples astonished at how even the forces of nature obeyed this humble passenger in their boat. How little they understood that the creator and sustainer of the universe was right there with them in the boat that day. It is truly comforting to know that Jesus is with us, 
in our own boats of life. As the saying goes, when the master of the oceans, the earth and the heavens is aboard, no waters can capsize the ship. No one can calm the storms of life like the Lord Jesus. Thirdly, we can observe signs of the end times. The end times will be characterized by a series of unprecedented events happening all over the world. Today, we are witnessing various events such as earthquakes, floods, diseases and more. In each of these occurrences, God is providing a warning of His justice and the imminent arrival of the end times. Let's read Matthew 24 verses 7 to 8 from the Gospel. It states that nations will rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be pestilences, famines and earthquakes in different places. All these events will mark the beginning of times filled with pain and turmoil. It might be tempting to believe that what we are currently witnessing, like the heavy rains in Brazil, fulfills biblical prophecies. However, we must recognize that what we are experiencing now is relatively mild compared to what is yet to come. The next event on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. Once the church is raptured, God's plan will continue to unfold rapidly, leading to the manifestation of famines, epidemics and earthquakes in various parts of the world. Even today, world leaders are alarmed by the looming specter of hunger caused by population growth, which will be exacerbated by shortages resulting from wars. Earthquakes are also capturing increasing public attention both those occurring presently and those anticipated in the future. It is crucial to remember, though, that what we currently witness serves as a small preview and not the ultimate fulfillment of our Saviour's words. Dear listeners, this serves as our warning. Things will not improve, but rather worsen in an increasingly chaotic manner. Lastly, Christ is our salvation. The message of salvation centers on the fact that through faith in Jesus Christ, people can be reconciled with God and receive forgiveness for their sins. Jesus, as the perfect sacrifice, died on the cross and rose again on the third day, demonstrating his power over sin and death. Those who believe in him and trust him as their personal savior receive the gift of eternal life and the assurance of being with God forever. Salvation is not something earned through good works or personal merit, it is a free gift bestowed by God to all who believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. Dear listeners, Jesus is our security both in the present and in eternity. It is crucial to draw closer to Him before it becomes too late. I invite all of you to join me in prayer for the nation of Brazil. Let us pray together with the following prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of compassion and concern for those who are suffering due to the heavy rains in Brazil. We acknowledge that you are the sovereign God over all things, and in you we find refuge and strength amidst life's storms. Pour out your healing love upon those who have lost loved ones in these tragic events. Be their comfort in times of pain and despair, and let them experience your close presence in the midst of their grief. Lord, we ask for your protection and strength for those who are battling against floods and destruction. Grant them wisdom and provide the necessary resources to face the challenges that lie ahead. May they find solace in your promise that you will never abandon or forsake us in our time of need. Merciful God, stretch out your mighty hand to those facing an uncertain future due to these tragedies. Give them hope and fortitude to move forward, trusting that you are at work even in the midst of adversity. We also pray, Lord, that you grant us wisdom and compassion to support and assist those who are suffering. Help us to be your hands and feet on the ground, extending love and practical help to those who are in desperate need. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, fill the hearts of those who are grieving, and may your light shine brightly in the midst of darkness. We trust in your power to bring comfort, healing, and restoration to those affected by these tragedies. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we conclude this video, our commitment to those affected by the heavy rains in Brazil remains steadfast. Let us continue to keep them in our prayers and seek ways to support them during their time of need. Thank you for joining us in this important conversation and for your willingness to make a difference in the lives of others. Together, we can bring about change. Until next time, may God bless you.